Good day! It's the long weekend in April and finally we're getting some warmer weather. It's actually going up to feels like 17 today. Uh, right now I think it's 12 and I still have some snow on the ground and actually last weekend there was a huge ice storm in Ottawa and parts of Ontario and uh, they did a lot of damage to be honest. So I'm gonna be uncovering all of my shrubs and trees that I covered up to protect from the harsh winds this winter. So I'll uncover that and see if there's any damage. I'll prune off anything that looks broken or diseased. And then I'll just do a little bit of weeding to try to prevent the weeds from spreading into the spring. And yeah, hopefully everything survived over the winter. We had a really hard winter. It was like four feet of snow, my whole backyard. And you're gonna see like a pile of snow back there still like, can't get out just yet um, so I'll have to do that corner next weekend we'll see so this entryway that runs from my um, driveway um, through to the backyard it only has some um, ground cover here and here mostly just sedum and creeping phlox and then I do have some vines over here like a climbing hydrangea or false hydrangea rather and some clematis and they're just kind of there temporarily because I'm waiting for the house to get siding painted and I know they're just gonna terrorize this area so I'm just gonna put some cardboard across there <clears throat> for them to walk on and use a ladder on and whatever else that they need to do and I'm not too worried about these because um, you can step on these and it seems to be like they're fine it's just um, creeping flux. I don't know. They, they just, they're okay. There was so much snow. There was like six feet of snow on this area alone. Um, so I don't have to do anything to those. They'll perk back up once it gets warmer. Now I'm just going to check out this. Um, this is a blackberry shrub. If I get closer, there's already some buds forming. So that's good. But then there's like some dead area here and you can tell because it's like a lot darker in color and um you can also do the scratch test so if you scratch like the top part here oopsie and if it's green underneath then you're good actually it is green underneath so it's probably just just this little tip here that yeah basically just broke off so it survived yay my, okay, so I buried my clematis in peat moss. So I'm just gonna uncover that. I mean, it is so thin. I bet you any money it would have been fine, but I thought that the snow and the ice would just break it. So I just, I buried it. <laughs> Anyways, there's just some, there's some growth forming right there. So it survived. There is some growth forming there. So I don't know if it's the peat moss and burying it that helped it survive. It just seems so fragile because I got it on sale in the spring. And now, and now I'll just keep it there temporarily until I can move it um, off to the, the side of the house. And this here is, oh gosh, what is this? The tag is missing. It doesn't look like I think it, it might be a climbing hydrangea. And look, there's a broken piece right there. So I'll be pruning that off. Go, go. And then here is false climbing hydrangea. Okay, so this is the regular climbing hydrangea and that's false climbing hydrangea. And there's buds forming on both of them. That's good. So we'll just leave that there. And then there's this other did this one survive? Let's take the leaves off of this clematis. I think it's a white clematis. Okay, so there's some definitely dry bits that are just snapping off. But I do see some buds. So these really... Okay, that, this one's bad. I'll probably... I'll trim that off. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'll do the scratch test always but some of it's pretty bad. I've got a rose over here that some animal, I think, nibbled on, or it broke off from ice. 
I don't know, but that's not me pruning it, that's for sure. And um, I also buried these as low as I can go. Oh no, look at this. Yep, that's an animal. Oh, so even though I buried this to try to save it, some animal got to it. What a shame. This is my sky's the limit rose, climbing rose. It's yellow. It's very upsetting. They just went nuts. So I'm gonna have to protect this. Yeah, I will definitely do some protecting. All right, so let's see if I can uncover. Oh, I think the ground is still a little frozen because I was just gently pulling up on this rose and it's it's like really tucked in there. So I'll have to dig it out or just wait longer. But this is such a shame. I have to go see my other rose. Now this is a more shaded area of my garden. This is a Zephyr and German climbing pink rose. And yeah, the ground is still super frozen. There will be no uncovering of this. The dogwood just did fine. There's already buds growing on the dogwood. No issues there. Japanese maple seems fine. Um, well, you can never tell with, with the, uh, this is a pinky winky hydrangea and the buds aren't gonna form yet, I don't think. So I'm just gonna wait on that one. I will be uncovering my, what is this called? Golden Ribbon Arborvitae. Laced up elderberry, budding up. It survived. It's just like a twig. <laughs> it's brand new. My service berry shrub is definitely budding up and this is gonna flower in spring. Look at all the snow. Goo. Why are you still here? Go away. There's a dappled willow. And last year, the squirrels or something would take every single one of these stems down and rip it right off and then just leave it, leave it on the ground, not eat it, not take it to do anything with it. And they're all budding up already and they grow like a weed. So I'll probably be trimming it down a third. It's my honeysuckle fine. And I, I didn't protect it at all. Um, it did say it was hardy for our area and these are buds and I think it survived. Yeah, they're soft. There's lots of them. We're good. This is my rhododendron azalea and I'm keeping it covered. I'm not uncovering this because the juicy buds that I know are on there because I saw them in the fall. I know the squirrels. They're gonna come at them and I'm gonna tear them up and eat them or just like honestly just tear them up. <laughs> I swear they just do damage. They don't even eat anything. So I'm leaving it covered for as long as I possibly can. I'm gonna have to look into how long it can be like this. I think it still gets sunlight through this little canopy thing here, this little tent. But if it doesn't, then I have to remove it. So I just have to look into that a little bit. This is a limelight hydrangea. It's just got a bit of damage um, from the weight of the snow. So I'm assuming, I don't know. Wow, I can't believe there was so much snow on this and I don't see any, any branches broken. Wow. Okay, I see like one. I saw, I see a lot of crossing branches here. That's not good because if the cross is too much and it rubs against each other, it can create a wound and then that can be susceptible to disease. Like an open wound on, on a, the branch would be not good. Oh, squirrel. My euonymus um, seems okay. I looked at it earlier, no damage. I don't know how these things, it must be that there was like light snow first and it hardened and like protected it. And then of course my humongous, um, what's it called? Whew. Uh, smoke bush, yeah. It goes all the way up to there and it would be great if it can become like this huge shrub. So I am gonna trim it so it promotes um, like the splitting. So it's not just like this one liter cane right here. Um, I'm gonna trim it down a third so that it opens up 
a bit more because right now they're just like these crazy long stems like it starts here and it's like it's all the way up that was like one year of growth <laughs> it's insane it's like five or four feet of a year growth and just like perennials down here and this <laughs> okay so i will uncover this this is my endless summer hydrangea it grows it uh, blooms on old and new wood and what i did this year was i pinned them down these canes all the way down to the ground and it did last for quite some time um and then they kind of just started popping up when the ground stopped being frozen and um, this was supposed to keep it low to the ground so that it the longest parts of the canes would not die off and therefore you would get blooms earlier in the summer than having to wait for the new growth to form buds so like these buds like i think it worked because these buds have green on them and so i have a feeling that a lot of these <clears throat> canes actually did survive because of this technique so i'll just take out these landscape staples they'll pop back up and hopefully yeah like some of them dried up this one's dried up so i'd probably snip right above the um the good buds you know i don't know if that's a good bud though and then you can just, again, well, it's green. It is green, so maybe I should just wait. The buds are dried up, but at least it's, um, it is green towards the end here. This guy, right on the edge, <laughs> that's pretty good. I don't know about this. It looks like dried buds here. So, I don't know. We'll see. Like, here's a green bud in there. But then some of them looks like they've dried out for whatever whatever reason um okay nothing uh damaged though because they were all smushed down to the ground so unless i walked over them they wouldn't really get damaged i'm gonna uncover this i wrapped it up it is my juniper and i want it to be very narrow like an arrow juniper but i am going to prune it to stay narrow yes B. next up we have a it's light it's a smooth hydrangea that's called um incredible and i left these guys on but we're supposed to snip this down it only grows on new wood so to control its size you can snip it down but my, mine's just a baby so i might just snip it for looks and that's it just prune it for looks my sand cherry shrub I want it to get nice and big, so I'm just going to take it down a third. It completely survived. It's totally fine. In the middle island, I have a tiger eye sumac. And over here, I have a standard that is a bloomerang lilac. And so we'll just check, make sure everything's okay. Now, last year, in a windstorm, this broke off. And so I, I, I snipped it so that the wound could heal a little bit better than when it was torn off. And it's green, but I have a feeling it's not budding up. And so I don't know what I'm gonna do. If it doesn't bud up, I'm gonna cut off the bottom here. It's just, I didn't really want a standard tiger eye sumac and now it's that's basically what it's become. So then I have like these two standards and they're too like matchy. Like I wanted this to be a shrub with its wide canopy and this one with a cute little ball. So it's different. Anyways, this will still have a canopy, but <laughs> they both look the same size at the moment. And it does have buds, so I'm not worried about it. And it's tiger eye sumac is very, it's, well, it's a cultivar of our native sumac. So it's pretty hardy here and it grows pretty fast, but as a cultivar, they made it so that it wouldn't grow. It wouldn't um, <clears throat> be like aggressive. So I'm not gonna get as many suckers as the regular sumac, apparently. So this guy, he's been budding since last fall. And so obviously I can't trim it, but I'm just looking for damage. I just see a little bit of damage here. These buds that are the flowering. I can't see, I can never focus. How do you guys do this? there. I guess you have to put your hand behind it. Anyways, those are the buds that we're looking for. This little guy, he seems okay. Yep, no damage, just got a bunch of leaves stuck in him. That's the um, 
<clears throat> blue spruce that I have. But it's just like a cute little globe. And then um, my euonymus, gold euonymus. Uh, I will just prune into shape and take anything that's broken, if there is anything. Feels okay. Yep. Good stuff. Oh. Oh, this one's broken. Oh, well. Just down there. Boop, 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 boop. That's okay. Oh, and this is a smoke bush as well. It's the same variety as the other one I have back there, but it's a dwarf. I don't know if we should be using the term dwarf. Let's see if it has anything broken. That looks broken right there. So I'll be snipping that off because it's not popping off easy. There's like a little bit of damage. Not so much. And then if you wanted to know why I have these domes, that's because I do have daffodils and allium, um, hyacinth planted, and they already started to get attacked by my vicious, vicious squirrels. And again, the squirrels, like they're not supposed to go after these, right? I don't have tulips, yummy, the yummy tulips that they usually prefer. I don't, I bought specific, I stayed away from tulips and, um, they still, they just attack them just to be mean, I swear. It's just because they're bored. They just want to play. So there's another one. I think that's a daff. And I'm just going to, I just bought these at the dollar store. They've got a bit of a opening there. I know, they're probably just, they're probably getting a little too hot, to be honest. Um, like maybe I should uncover them while I work out here and scare the squirrels away. I don't know. I do have more that I haven't covered yet, but I'm waiting on an order. I ordered the um, clushes that are chicken wire clushes, and I think those are better. I just couldn't find chicken wire clushes anywhere. And just so you know, clushes are insanely expensive. I guess it's because they're kind of awkward to make out of chicken wire or any type of wire, like, because they're circular and pretty looking. I mean, I'm sure you could just make like a box, <laughs> but it wouldn't look as nice. I don't know. Anyways, I was like, you know what? I'll take care of them and I'll just pay for them. So I found them on Amazon, like, oh God, it looks like six for like hundred and something. Ooh. Uh, but they're gonna protect all the daffodils I have and allium. They also just like popping off the heads of the allium, just cause, not cause they eat them. They don't like it just because they're just like little jerks <laughs> although they're very cute and obviously Coco chases them the second he sees them but they don't care they just like live in this tree this maple and they're just like causing havoc having a ball um I also have crocus all throughout my island bed I have crocus and it just looks like kind of grass I mean I hope it's crocus because um, I can't really remember. I'll have to look back in my videos, but I have a video of me planting all of these using my brand new fancy auger, planting all the bulbs. And um, I love using the auger. I'll have to do another video like that. I wish I got larger augers so I can plant, you know, more of like the larger perennial gallon. Um, I don't know, like two gallon. Oh, there's another one. That looks like a daffodil. So you better, better protect those real quick because they're just terrors in my garden. All right, it's time to get to work and do some pruning and then some uncovering.
I finished the damage control <laughs> and uncovered everything and pruned off uh, anything I thought was for sure dead or damaged. Um, and they're looking <laughs> a, a lot better. Um, I've also perched them up with these cute little, <sighs> see that? It was from the dollar store. Just little pincher hooks. So I'll just turn this around because it's easier. So all of the remaining wood on the clematis is green because I did a little scratch test. And then I have here, I was, finally found the tag. It's Moonlight Climbing Hydrangea. And I just propped him up with one of those landscape pinchers. And um, that's the other side of him. It's got like two going that way. And this is the false Ooh. climbing hydrangea. And it just looked like that the whole winter. I didn't have to do anything to it. <laughs> and then I really trimmed this non-labeled clematis. It had a lot of dead. It, what happened was I think it was all wrapped around the top of that support and it just, it just didn't survive at the top. So I just chopped it down to its latest buds and where I found green at the tip and called it a day. The blackberry bush, um, only a few stems survived. So obviously this needs protection over the winter. And the three stems that were very long that did survive looked a little out of proportion. So I just ended up rounding it all out and keeping it short. And I am gonna have to protect it. I saw some nibbles on it. So I'm gonna protect that. The rose, um, I uncovered it from the peat moss soil or it looks like soil but it's just peat moss and um i propped it up as best i could and i chopped off anything that was like it just dried out and um black there is one crazy black area that i'm worried about and i think it's dead but i'm gonna give it a chance this this was the only one i couldn't bury in the ground so this i buried in the ground and it's clearly green and um, there are buds showing on it in some areas. Uh. So that screen, this was also in the ground and it was green, let me back up. And um, there are buds on it. And then this center one was left up, not in the ground cause it, it wouldn't bend to the ground. Um, this part, it's just too, it's like the leader, I think. And it's not, it's not green. It looks black death. And um, if I climb all the way up here, it does get green. So I'm like, hmm, maybe. I trimmed off the top here and it's like, well, it looks dead. <laughs> but it's like green over here. You know, I do a scratch test and it's green there and then down here. So I'm confused. I think it's, it's definitely not green here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to chop it off, but it's the leader. It's the leader that goes straight up, which is the one I wanted to like eventually go like this. <sighs> so yeah, I cut the leader right there, right here double checked and it is dead all of that is dead um, I uncovered this little guy and uh, I'll give him a trim too on my pruning day uncovered my endless hydrangea it's actually looking pretty decent there's just a little bit of uh, surface scratching off of this one cane here see that and so but there's buds on it that feel okay, so I don't, I'm just gonna leave that one. It doesn't look like it. it's um, past the green part, so I think it's just a skin. Same thing here. It's just the skin that came off. I don't, I don't think it's called skin, but you know what I mean. Okay, I did not touch this at all. This is a climbing, and I just don't wanna touch it. Last year, it looked dead <laughs> completely, and then it, B formed buds no problem i didn't have to do anything to these nothing 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 i can't even get to the snowbound stuff nothing for the service berry uncovered 
um, this Arbor Vitae. It's lost its yellow, <laughs> yellow ribbon, not so much. Um, that's probably because it hasn't seen the sunlight. So I was just presumptuous to assume nothing was wrong with the dogwood, but there's lots wrong with the dogwood. So right here, there's a broken piece. And this, since this is like a thin twiggly thing, I'm just gonna cut it at the base and get rid of it completely. And right here, there's a sore that is bad. So um, I'm gonna take out the whole branch. Also, it's the branch that's kind of leading into the patio. I don't want that to get much bigger anyways. So I'm gonna cut that to the base and lose the whole piece, <laughs> but that's okay. They grow fast. And let me just inspect anything else. I'll be, when I do a proper pruning, I'll be getting rid of the little twiggly things that don't need to be there. Although they are kind of supportive. Um, this is looking a little dark. Mm, here's some dead right here. It's just the end and it doesn't look like it would get um, to be a problem. And this little guy should probably be to the end. <laughs> the one green one. <laughs> Um, oh, one more. See, uh, hmm, let me get a better angle here. You see that guy right here? He is all dead right here. So I'm gonna cut closer. Get him off of there. Okay, let me look at it from a different angle. Wow, surprisingly had more damage than like a lot of the other shrubs. And this is native. Okay, on to... <laughs> uncovering. Okay, let me zoom. Oh, I am zoomed out. Um, okay, so this worked out really nicely. Uh, a lot better than the other rose. This is my Zephyrin Druin rose. And it was completely buried. And all the canes are green. I don't see any of that black stem. Um, all the leaves are still on it and green, but they'll dry out. Uh, and then once they dry out, I just kind of like they just fall off once you touch them. I, what I'm gonna be doing is a proper prune for my roses and I'll just do a video on roses uh, and show how to train, like prune them first and then train the leader up and get rid of anything that isn't going directly towards that fence. Like I'll be cutting these off. So it's like I protected this one for nothing cause it's going straight into the other shrub. Can't have that. So I'll be pruning that off later, but I'm gonna do that in a separate video. But yay, it worked. Everything looks really healthy. So I guess the moral to the story here is that protecting over the winter, even on considered hardy to zone five um, is best. I This is the first time I've seen a lot less damage um, on my covered protected plants than before. And on the ones I didn't cover, there, there was damage, right? A little bit, only a little bit, like on the hydrangeas and that dogwood. Um, but yeah, I will continue to bury my roses and my endless summer hydrangea to protect the canes um, from drying out. And uh, I think that was a really good call. So if you want to learn how to do that and how to pin down the canes properly and cover them up, you can check out my earlier video on how to do that. And um, wrapping the shrubs is just wrapping the shrubs with burlap. So that one's easy. Well, this one I didn't actually even do with burlap. I just wrapped it with twine to keep it from um, having the shoots kind of like lean down with the heavy ices and stuff like that in the snow. I just want it to be very narrow. All right, so next um, I'm going to just do some weeding, but you don't have to see that boring stuff. And then uh, next week I'll be edging, like re-edging the border here and pruning. But I'll do like those mini videos of like, okay, pruning, the roses and then pruning hydrangea and then pruning, you know, like all different, it's like five, 10 minute videos for that. And I think that'll be short and sweet instead of this. This is probably a very long winded video. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just excited to be out and doing something. It's beautiful right now. It's t-shirt weather. Um, hope you have a lovely long weekend and I'll see you next time.